Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It's been another chilly but kind of quiet day across West Michigan, which we kind of needed after the rain and snow moved through Friday into the early part of Saturday. Unfortunately, that cloud cover well, kind of missed us out on seeing views like what we got from up in the UP. This was a view of the northern lights from last night. Thanks to Alexandra up in Marquette who took this photo. Absolutely gorgeous view of the those northern skies last night. Of course, if you ever take a weather photo and you want to send it our way, you can find me on social media. Meteorologist Michael Barons on Facebook and at Mike Barons WX on the X Twitter, Instagram and threads. The snowfall out there that we were seeing last night did accumulate in some spots, most of it 96 and to the north as we were expecting. It saw as high as 3.9 inches in Reed City, 3.5 in Vestaburg, 3.5 in Edmore as well, 3.3 in Hart and 3 inches on the nose in Big Rapids here in Walker, just barely a trace of snow overnight last night. Temperatures, of course, today helped melt the snow that did fall 37 in Grand Rapids, 40 Muskegon, 39 in Holland. That's inside or three degree guarantee told you 40 hit 37 came just within three now two days in a row of course hope to add to that streak as we head toward tomorrow speaking of tomorrow 13 weather ball lit up in green as no change is foreseen but that weather ball is blinking bright with more rain and snow both in sight the 13 weather ball is sponsored by La Fontaine Lincoln Grand Rapids and those temperatures overnight tonight should stay above freezing for most of West Michigan, which means any snow that is still lingering around will continue to melt as we head through tonight and into the early part of Sunday. Temperatures as of 1030, 35 Grand Rapids, 37 Muskegon and Holland, close to 40 in Kalamazoo and even above freezing in Big Rapids and Ludington. Overnight, don't expect temperatures to fall much further from where they're at right now. Rain and snow chances will start to develop by sunrise with rain and snow chances continuing throughout the day tomorrow. Tomorrow, temperatures again pushing into the upper 30s across West Michigan. We'll call that low tonight 35 cloudy skies of a flake or sprinkle possible, but nothing consistent. Sunday is when rain and snow becomes widespread again and again like Friday. Expect to see some accumulation 96 and to the north will be dried out on Monday as temperatures continue to stay fairly seasonable high of 39 as we head into the start of the week. The cloud cover is all across West Michigan this evening, but the moisture not quite here yet. Still back in Illinois and Iowa. This is going to track across Lake Michigan here as we head through tonight and again greet you Sunday morning with showers and some snow. So let's time it out hour by hour as we head past midnight into the early AM. We start dry, but by the time we head toward 4 or 5 AM, that's when we start to see showers and some snow working its way into West Michigan. This will become widespread by sunrise Sunday with a very similar setup to what we just saw on Friday 96. This is the corridor that's going to be a mix. Ionia, Kent, Ottawa counties. This is where rain and snow both will be expected, possibly leading to some slushy roads areas north of there. This is all going to be snow. Expect some accumulation and much like what you had this last round areas south of Kent County, mostly just a rain event with pattern continues throughout the day Sunday into Sunday evening before becoming more scattered and eventually coming to an end as we head toward Monday morning will be quiet through the first part of the week. Even some sunshine poking through the clouds by late Monday afternoon, but then we kind of repeat it again as we head into Tuesday with another round of rain and snow possible, though Tuesday looking to be more broadly scattered than the consistent everywhere all the time rain and snow that we have for your Sunday. In terms of accumulation, snowfall potential out there for Sunday is mostly 96 into the north. This is where we're thinking one to two inches of snow will be a possibility. Some localized areas may see totals that go over two, but on a broad note, it's going to be about a one to two inch snowfall expected as we head through Sunday. Here's a look at temperatures for your Sunday 30s and 40s on the lake shore. So again, the snow that does accumulate will melt some as it does fall. Temperatures even in the northern zones above freezing throughout the day on Sunday in the mid 30s. That'll warm up to about 38 in Grand Rapids and continue up into the low 40s as you head toward Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. 
Temperatures stay just below 40 through the first half of this week with the rain and snow chances both Sunday and Tuesday. We'll dry things out as we head toward the end of the week and warm things up too. Friday will be up close to 50 degrees next weekend. Got a couple chances for rain and snow. We're still working to time those out a little better. Temperatures falling through the weekend with the 10 day forecast ending with temperatures in the mid 30s. Here's why with Michael, sponsored by the Bugs Exhibit at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. And the weather we had Friday and what we can expect for Sunday comes with a number of driving challenges, but could different tires help aid your travels? When it comes to winter weather, swapping sets of wheels could actually help prevent you from swapping insurance cards with another driver. When it comes to winter driving, one of the best ways to do it safely is to prepare. Part of that preparation can include switching out your normal tires for winter ones. But why should you do this? We reached out to Paul Armock from Alpine Tire and Alignment to find out why. If you've never ran a snow tire, you'll want to run one, you'll want to. And once you do, you'll never want to have a have an all season on the winter. Uh, they do have a huge benefit. So what do these tires actually do? Winter tires are a big benefit because of the way that the tires open up and they, they have a softer rubber compound, so that allows your stopping a lot faster. And for acceleration is, is very big too on them. They're very helpful. And that softer compound really does make a difference. According to data from the Michigan State Police, summer tires can take 47 feet to stop at 10 miles per hour on ice. All season tires can take up to 40 feet, while winter tires can cut that number down to 21. Other tire tips include making sure you have a proper tread depth, proper tire inflation, and your tires are in an overall good condition. So that just leaves two questions. When should you take the winter tires off again, and are there any drawbacks? No, there's not a drawback besides the fact that you're going to have to change them out when the weather starts to get above 45 degrees and staying that way. You really want to put your all seasons back on. Now one extra hurdle for many is where to store that second set of tires. Of course, if you have a garage or a shed, that is ideal, but some tire shops may actually offer storage solutions as well. So just make sure you do your research before you go out and make a purchase. And it's time for another round of West Michigan holiday news as the countdown to Christmas continues. First up, downtown Muskegon is looking more festive this holiday season and an organization called Glow put on by the Lakeshore Legacy Project worked to raise money to install Christmas lights. When the lights originally went up, they were blinking, but after hearing from the community, the city decided to keep them solid colors. Since then, people have had a lot of good things to say. We've gotten really positive feedback. Uh, the just the amount of lights and and particularly at this vantage point when you're standing at Western from the traffic circle looking up to the east, it's just a really cool effect. We've had uh, lights on the poles for years um, and they, they've been wrapped and it's always looked really elegant and nice. This is just kind of a, a, a step up to make it more exciting and, and something really fun to look at. City leaders are also proud of the display at Hackley Park. They say it helps them showcase downtown Muskegon's transformation over the last decade. And just down the lake shore, a little bit of snowfall made the first night of Magic at the Mill more special in Holland for Friday. Each Friday and Saturday at Windmill Island from now until December 16th, this event will be going on. The popular Dutch village will be lit up with Christmas lights from the peaks of the buildings to its windmill. It's a family friendly event with plenty to do for the kids. There's even a special tulip field of lights synced up to music. You do need tickets for the event, but you can get them at the gate or on Magic at the Mills website. And the Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park is also getting in the holiday spirit. It has transformed into a winter wonderland. Now through January 7, you can bring your family out to experience the 29th annual Christmas and holiday traditions exhibit. There are more than 40 unique holiday displays showcasing holiday traditions from around the globe, including a train with trolleys that highlight different iconic buildings in West Michigan. Nothing is the same year to year. You know, you'll, you'll recognize many of the same familiar traditions, uh, but there's a lot of new things happening. And um, one of the great new things that we're featuring is winter glow, which are those open late evenings. 
The Winter Glow event features sparkling lights and music, even a bonfire and warm drinks outside in the gardens. They're extending their hours for the season. For a list of the hours, visit our website. And continuing the holiday theme, volunteers here in West Michigan are hoping to make the holidays a bit brighter for members of our military. 85 people came out earlier this week to a tree farm in Goebbels to load more than 350 trees and wreaths for trees for the troops. These are going to Randolph Air Force Base in Texas, uh, Whitman or Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, and Rock Island Arsenal in Illinois. All of the trees include ornaments handmade by kindergartners at Goebbels Elementary School. The donors want those military families to know we're all thinking about them during the holidays. I think a lot of times the military feels like, what are they doing? They don't feel um, gratitude a lot of times from, but we are very grateful. I want them to know, I want them to just know peace and love and gratitude from all of us, from everybody, just to know that picture of all those volunteers, you know, that we love and support them. And that was taken at Wamhoff Farms Nursery, which is one of 56 locations that loaded up trees earlier this week. They're now on their way to 93 different military bases. And speaking of decorating the Christmas trees, uh, it's a beloved tradition, of course, for many, but one couple in Germany just took it to a whole nother level. They just broke the record for the largest number of decorated trees in a home. That final number coming in at 555 trees of all different shapes, sizes, and yeah. colors. They had the previous record, which they broke in this attempt. The old record was 444. What makes this even crazier is you're not looking at some giant mansion. It's just a normal home in a small German town west of Hanover. But reportedly, they did add an addition onto their home. Well, you guessed it, so they could decorate even more trees. As an absolutely wild amount of Christmas trees. I bet their power bill goes crazy for this month, but you know, it is an amazing view and an amazing feat nonetheless. Of course, now you're up to date on the latest weather forecast for us here in West Michigan and some cold weather and Christmas news. You can always find more online at 13yourside.com or by downloading our news and weather apps. For now, though, thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.